What's up? How are you guys today? We're going to talk about the healthiest vegetables from my perspective. Now the mainstream conventional wisdom will have you believe that eh, fruits and veggies are so good for you, they're so chock full of nutrients, you need more nutrients. When in fact, we don't need more of anything. We actually need less toxins in the food, water, and air. It's comical. They'll put so much crap in every single thing, all the agrochemicals, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, the plastics, the antibiotics, the laundry list of stuff that's poisoning you. And then they'll say, oh yeah, drink this green juice. That's gonna fix everything. Uh, very, very crazy. So the main principle that all of these vegetables are healthy on is that they're low in anti-nutrients, they're not that inflammatory to the body, and they are excellent for detox because of their fiber content, and they're almost kind of like a clean slate. So over the past two years now on my new diet, I've been eating these vegetables specifically for various reasons, which we'll get into. And there are a few that I don't have included here for various reasons, maybe like it's eggplant or zucchini. And if those are prepared in you know good ways, then they're fine. But you know, taste-wise, health-wise, these are what I like. So here we have our six vegetables, and you know, are they technically vegetables from an American perspective? Yes, but you know, beans, potatoes, sometimes people consider them starch, legumes, all types of different stuff, but the point here, it's like a side dish and something you'd have alongside the starch and the meat in your meal. And there's a lot of similarities between all of these Excellent, excellent mineral sources, especially considering they're organic and the soil quality is definitely higher and they all offer gut motility, whether it's because of the starch content or just the sheer volume. And I don't really want to go in any particular order, so I'll just go with like my taste, uh, what I like the most, because I'll say it again, all of them are excellent sources of minerals, really can't go wrong. Some things are better than others, you know, like the shiitake mushrooms are very high in copper. The potatoes are very high in copper. The beans are a good source of molybdenum. But overall, if you include these foods in your diet, you're getting excellent sources of plant-based minerals. Uh, so we'll just point out uh, the few niche things here and there about each of these vegetables that I like. So shiitake mushrooms, probably the highest in minerals overall. Very, very tasty, very delicious. I really like these with any meal. They go so good with meat and they're so tasty, just caramelized in the pan. So the main reason I have these in my diet, you know, the shiitake mushrooms can be expensive, but it's really for the taste and very, very high gut motility to calorie ratio. Uh, because even if you don't really digest these and you're not getting a lot of nutrition, just because they're bulky, you know, they have like a high water content, they just have a lot of mass and help things keep moving very quickly. Next up, I really like artichokes. And this is an organic brand I found that actually tastes decent in olive oil. Uh, pretty hard to find, very expensive. Uh, Le Moulins Majoub. I like using this in the dips, like I'll blend this up with some beans. Um, re really just like the flavor and taste overall. Good for gut motility, very, very fibrous. Um, so for some people, you know, they don't really tolerate them too well at the start, but I like them a lot. They always sit well on my stomach, one of my favorite foods overall. So number three, we'll do the potato. And I mean, if these were French fries, they'd be at the top of my list because I absolutely love French fries. However, those are pretty difficult and time consuming to make, so I don't have them that often. But whether you're just boiling them or you know dicing it up and sauteing them, throwing a few pieces in the air fryer, it's really the best overall complete food uh, from a plant perspective because you don't have to have rice you don't have to have any vegetables, you just have the potato. It's full of minerals, it's full of starch, it's nutrient dense, it's calorically dense, it's so, so good for you overall. You know, just having meat and potato is really good enough. And, and that can't be stated. Uh, you know, one of the minimally inflammatory approaches and someone coming from a very poor state of health, this is the top food. Because it's simple, it's easy to prepare, you know, you don't have to think too much. You just peel it, you cook it, and you have it with some steak. Don't have to worry about anything else, you know, not getting technical. Uh, really, really understated, really understated. I mean, they're so high in potassium too. That's something people don't really talk about, just the copper content. The mineral content of potatoes is very, very overlooked. I think they're almost like victimized now with the keto stuff and the paleo stuff. You know, 
just really ignoring how nutritious potatoes can be. I guess we'll do the beans next because I really like the bean dip I've been making. Uh, so we have cannellini beans and butter beans. Uh, any white bean is fine. I think navy beans are okay too. They're just the lowest in anti-nutrients overall. I think, I mean, cannellini beans out of those are probably the best choice. And it's just an easy, accessible source of fiber, you know, soluble, gut motility stuff again. Excellent source of minerals. I don't really have these that often unless I make the bean dip, which I do really enjoy with some bread. Uh, so that's what I mainly use these for. But in my like meal template video where I have the steak with the rice and the beans, the beans are a main minimally inflammatory component. So I would say either potato or beans and rice is like the best minimally inflammatory base for a meal. And any of this other stuff is kind of a deviation and kind of extra and not really necessary for health. It's more about taste and flavor. Cauliflower has always been one of my favorite vegetables. I like the taste, just you know, steamed in a pan or sauteed with a little bit of salt on it. It's really, really delicious. And because it's you know, so large, like it's a high water content, low calorie, it's excellent for gut motility. It's so good for that. You know, if you have a thing of white rice, which is really dense and starchy and low motility, having a few pieces of cauliflower in that meal will really keep things moving and it's so excellent for detoxing your liver. Really one of the, the best choices. And I guess the real flavor component for the most part is white onions, which actually do have a decent amount of minerals. Uh, but something like an onion is mainly going to feed certain types of bacteria in your stomach. You know, if you're just caramelizing them in a pan to add flavor to your meal, they do have some compounds in them that kind of irritate some people's guts and cause gas. So these are kind of at the bottom of my list because of that. However, they are very, very tasty. They are delicious. I do enjoy them from time to time in various dishes. Garlic I'll have sometimes on occasion too, but that's more of a spice or seasoning. Uh, so hopefully this helps you guys understand why I'm incorporating certain things into my diet. And you know, I just go by taste and feel and what I need. And yeah, I could be more on top of things. And you know, I should probably have potatoes more in my diet, maybe throw some more beans in here and there. But right now things are going pretty good, going pretty smooth. But this is really the main acceptable vegetables that I find in the supermarket. You know, I literally go through every single thing. What can I eat? What can I eat? This is basically it from that vegetable produce perspective. Uh, so hopefully you guys have been using my tips and health advice and everything I've been doing recently to improve your own health. If you guys do want to support me, uh, you can go to frank com to check out all of my businesses. But as always, please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, as I said guys, frank com to support me further. Thank you.